Hi everyone, this is Erin from Sandpaper Road, and today we are reviewing Stamping and Company's Somerset Studio. They were gracious enough to send me uh, one of their most popular back issues, uh, the March and April 2017 back issue, and this is The Art of Paper and Mixed Media. What an amazing magazine. Now, this is actually one of my favorite publications from uh, Stamping and Company, and so I'm going to just go through a little bit of it and then I thought we'd make an inspiration project based on uh, some ideas we get from here. This issue is available on stampington.com but at the end of this video I'm going to tell you how you could actually get this exact issue sent right to your door at no cost. So we're going to do our very first giveaway today at Sandpaper Road. I am so excited and thanks again to Stampington for providing the magazine. So this magazine generally runs $9.99 uh, in the U.S. and $11.99 in Canada. And subscriptions are always available. It's really reasonable. You, it's $40 uh, U.S. dollars for six issues, which ends up to be like $6.60 an issue. Uh, now, you know that is a, a more or that costs less than most stamp sets. So you're really getting a good deal. This, to me as a magazine, and I am not just saying this, I have been a fan of Stampington magazines for a long time. This is the kind of thing that to me makes me feel like I am on vacation, sitting in a beach house, or sitting on the porch, or on the beach, looking closely at good photography, and um, getting inspired. This is just just to give you an idea now look at that the photography is outstanding and you can learn a lot as an artist and as a contributor from the photography um, for example if you sell your art online you can study how the photos are taken uh, the angles the light the position the close-ups um, you can try to sort of like look at one particular project and maybe try to decode the layers of a project in reverse order. Like thinking like, how did they do that? What did they do first or second or third? Um, and then you can think to yourself, like if you see something that you think, oh, I just love that. You could look a little closer and be like, why do I love that? This was one of the, this was one of the things I saw. And I thought, now, I absolutely love that. And I spent so much time just staring at this page. I'm sure I look just silly. But I was like, why do I love that? And I really just looked at it for a long time. What do I love about it? How was this made? What was the process? What went first or second or third? And, of course, in uh, for each project, they include a supply list. There's always inspirational quotes, and they do include a technique. But even if I was just spending time looking at the good photography, I would uh, get a lot of benefit from it. And then I think to myself, how could I make something I love based on those things that I love about that project? And a lot of times I found myself thinking, oh, I could, I could totally make that. I could totally make that. It wouldn't look like that. Or maybe I like these points on this project or I don't like these points. Or maybe I like, um, you know, this detail or this detail, but not this detail. Just whatever, you know. And I start to think of my own supplies, things that I have and don't have. Um, it's really, really full of inspiration. Each issue also comes with um, templates that you can, and template inspiration that you can use to create your own projects. It's so neat. And my favorite part, um, the artist papers. And all of them are eight and a half by 11. They're also available, oops, I skipped one. They're also available in packs that you could purchase on their website. And they give you details. Uh, this one was on right here. Yeah, right here. And you could, um, they give you details about how you could order those artist papers packs. 
um, on the website and they are perfectly sized to run through your printer. So you could use them for scrapbook pages or cards or art journaling or mixed media projects. They're, it's pretty thick paper, much thicker than a magazine page, um, but still, you know, the flimsy magazine page, this is not, this is not that same paper. It's clearly like a, it's got a glossy finish and it's clearly a lot heavier. This was the article that I almost used um, for the video, for the project for the video today. And it, it's called The Discomfort Zone, Pushing Yourself and Your Art in New Directions. And it gave little, not only inspiration photos, but little tips like um, use your non-dominant hand or change your palette by elimination of color. And I imagine, put away the usual suspects. Um, and so on and I imagine myself doing some kind of a uh, crazy project with my left hand in this video and I thought um maybe that's not gonna be maybe that's something I could do in my own private art time instead of on the public eye so I changed my mind and thought that I would do a combination inspiration project based on these two things from the magazine this is um, called the Comfort of Home, a paper house quilt, and quilt is in quotes. Um, this artist, I'll just show you a little bit. This artist created a no sew quilt, which is essentially a, a mixed media journal page, just with lots of paper and printed things that were on hand. Oh, that's the next article. And I loved that because, you know, if it has anything to do with sewing, I am not doing it. So there's that. Also, I was totally inspired by this page, this article called Home Sweet Home Snail Mail. And this was created. Look at that. It's about sending snail mail, but the uh, artist used file folders. Oh, that's the next one used a file folders to create sort of an accordion looking type sendable mail and I just loved the houses I was so inspired by the houses in both of those projects I'm not going to take too much time right now going through page by page of the issue because first of all one of you today is going to win this exact magazine I am personally going to send it to you complete with the artist papers in it yes just exactly the way it is um, and I'll give details about that giveaway at the end of the video so I am ready to see if I can make this scrapbook page here and the first thing I was thinking was uh, I pulled a bunch of my papers that some that I had had from my stash that I just love, 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 love so much that I'd been hoarding because I didn't want to cut them. And others are ones from my that I made up with my jelly plate. And I actually made them in another video. So I'll put, just in case you're wondering how, I don't think this one was in the video, but I know for a fact that these other ones were from that other video. So I'll link in the description box also to that jelly plate video or the Jelly Arts video, and you can see how I did that. And um, so here's what I was thinking. Let me, this one is a nice, I'm, I'm imagining having the, like in the magazine where that accordion look of the fold out houses, and I so wanted to do that. I made a mark with my fingernail back here. Yeah, I did. Okay, so let me see if I can cut this. I thought about using this and I still might, because it's pretty thick. I did this on watercolor paper, um, but I did this on watercolor paper too. So I think I'm gonna use these two as the accordion part of the house for the scrapbook page. And let me just make this first. Let me move these out of the way. Look at this, I love this. It was just random stamps and gel medium and texture paste and stuff. And um, I think I, what I'll do is cut this halfway through. Let me cut it in half here at six. Okay. And then I can save this maybe for the for another part of the project. I hope I did that the way I wanted to do it. And then 
let me score this here. I'm going to score it at, um, I'm thinking maybe like half an inch right there. And then let me go to about, it looks maybe, ah, what would be enough good room here? About four and three quarters maybe? That seems okay. Four and three quarters. And then, did I put, was I thinking of doing another? Yeah. At, um, what is this? Maybe at nine, nine and a quarter. Let's try that. Yeah, okay, so I've got a couple score lines here. Okay. And then this score line here. Now, this is not based on any type of um, measurements that were given in the magazine. This is just my own thought here uh, for what I was thinking. Ooh, that's... Okay, and then this one, let me put that off to the side. And But this is a score probably at about, oh, about half an inch or so. And then I think this is just at about five and three quarters. Okay. There. Let me get this out of the way for now. Now, here is the thought that, let's see, one of these will be attached down. Would it be this one attached down? Mm -hmm. Uh huh. Like that is what I was thinking. And then, th so this would go like this. Oh, this would have to be folded this way. Yeah, like that. Okay. Now, that doesn't look like much, does it? But let's attach it and then let's cut some rooftops out. Okay, yeah, let's do that. I think I'm gonna use some of this uh, Nuvo Deluxe Adhesive to attach. This is how I wanted it, isn't it? Yes, it is. Okay. Right like this. I just, ooh, I think I'm gonna need to move this here. I didn't anticipate where my fold was gonna be. Ah! There we go. There we go. Okay, this is just like a wash rag. There. That's gonna be nice. That's gonna dry real good. And then that'll stay in place. And we'll have our little accordion folds like that. How come though I wanted this to be, oh, I see, because it was like this. So really this fold didn't matter. This fold didn't matter. I wonder if I have time to pick it up. Oh, good. Okay, good. I like that. Good. I, I, I am realizing that I didn't need that fold, that if I was gonna do it that way, I didn't need that fold. Okay, I thought I wasn't gonna need, I, I don't know why I uh, thought that. Oh, you know why? Because I was gonna do on the underside. I didn't know if I was gonna do on the underside. Okay. There we go. Now while that dries, like that. Um, I'm gonna lay this, my Tim Holtz platform on top of it just for a weight, and I'll come back when it dries and we'll go from there. My little accordion folder thing is dry, 
and I realized that I, before I do anything else, I really am going to need that little quarter inch or half inch mark right here. I don't know what I was thinking, but um, I'm going to need it. Oops. And of course I went the wrong way. So let's see, let me put this in here and score because I did a little sample first. Yeah, I need to have that there. I don't know how in the world I thought I was going to attach it down if I don't. So this is what I'm going to do right here. Where's my thing? Okay, on this big one, I'm going to write a note to myself. Where is the Sharpie? Glue here. I'm just going to need to do that. That's I, I will forget. And see, now I, what I can do is glue that, and I imagine that's glued down. Then I'll pull it this way and see little houses. But then I can also, let's say it's glued down, pull it this way and see little houses. Okay, so this is the part that I'm going to have to glue down. Okay, now before, let me get this out of the way. Before I do that, we're going to need to make this a double-sided piece of paper. So I have a piece of paper that I used. Uh, this was sort of randomness. It's sort of half just paint whatever and half jelly plate and half, I don't even know. But it's cool looking to me, so I think I'm just going to use my tape runner, but you know what I want? I want it to actually go past this fold. I was thinking that it might help secure my fold and stuff. So I will do that. I think maybe um, I would maybe consider using other adhesive other than this also, depending on what I'm using it for and how long I want it to last. Gel medium is always the, always the longest lasting. I don't think I would ever use hot glue on this, but you know, it's just me. This is pretty flimsy paper, and let's see what we can do here. Um, oops. Oh, I know, because I wanted it to not be over here, that's why. There. Okay. okay, good. And we'll trim this off like that. These are my Tim Holtz scissors by Tonic. I love them so much. I'm gonna save every scrap that I cut off from when I'm from this part because I think it would be cute to use later. Now, let's make sure we can fold this where we're folding it. I don't want any weird surprises. I was gonna glue this here which means that essentially this would have to fold both ways, right? This will fold this way, and if that folds this way, this has to come this way. Yep, like that, see? glued down like this it would open up or like this it would open up all right good so let's do this back part
I could have totally done this different using a paper trimmer, but do um, you know what discouraged me from doing that is because I knew I was going to cut little rooftops anyway. And I thought, what is the difference if, um, but I will say what bothers me here though is um, this, I'll, uh, no, I'll leave it. And this will cut off as well. Okay, now we will, this would be glued down. This would go this way. That means this would go this way. Uh-huh, uh-huh, and this would go this way. So nice. So nice, and we'll just help it along, okay. and it would pull this way, and then it would also pull this way. Good, very nice. I love it. Now, next, put that for a second. Oops, I have just a regular square, just a scrap of cardboard and a scrap of paper, a smaller scrap of paper. And I think I'm done with that for now. And so what I want to do is cut little rooftops. Um, and I want this front one to be super small. And what I'm gonna use, I'm gonna put this here because I have the feeling I'm just gonna go all over the place, is this uh, this is a Stabilo pencil. Can you see? And on the pencil, it is used for, it says it's used for paper, glass, plastic, and metal. It's outstanding, and I'm choosing to use this to mark off my area because then I can go in afterwards with like a water pen and drag drag the black and it'll look really good. It'll actually save me a step later. So, and I, you won't, I won't need much. I am going to be really glad I did this this way. In my practice, I used a Sharpie and of course I'm not as much trying to make the mark, but I guess you'll just see in a minute. And then I can cut leaving leaving some of that black intact. Oof, because I have texture paste right there. That's why. Goodness. Okay. Glad I have these scissors. There. That is perfect. That is exactly what I wanted. And now, right there. Right there. Now this, I'm going to save for maybe decorating later on the project. Now, this I will maybe, maybe I want this to be right here. Like that. Good. Mm -hmm. Let me see what it is I want to. Oof! What I want to do here about this? I want one right there, but I want it to be like tall. Do I? Yeah, right there, the peak, right there. Mm -hmm. That'll be perfect. Oh, but except that I can't cut that off. Wait, why couldn't I? No, I could. I'll still have the fold. I could totally cut that off. As long as I keep some of the fold, I was I I almost psyched myself out. See? I just have to keep some of the fold. It'll fold. Mm -hmm. I am totally eyeballing that angle. That's okay. 
I'm glad too that we doubled up this paper instead of just using one paper because the strength that's going to be needed here, we're, we really are going to be relying on that extra strength. See, now what I'll do is go back in and make that line even more. You'll see why later because then um, what I can do is go in, like I said, with a water pen and just do... Just make that. That'll look awesome. Look how that looks so far. It looks good. Oh, look. Got my little town. Now, this one I want way up top. So, let me go like that. And the last one, that looks so good. I love that. And the last one, let's see. Where do we want him to go? I almost want him to have two. Two little peaks right there. You may be seeing some shimmer in this paper. Do you know what this is? This is, um, what is the spray? Goosebump spray. <gasps> oh, what the is? It looks so good. Let's trim that up. Oh, yay. Now we can go like this. Or like this. Look, look, or like this. Uh-huh. That's awesome. We'll decorate each house. I wanna take a minute and look back at our inspiration photos before we move on. This was the one that I liked, and then this was the other one that I liked. This was where I got the accordion idea. And the one thing that I noticed that made me like this was the variety between the way the rooftops go and uh, the different pattern paper choices or lack of pattern paper choices in this one. And the rooftops, for example, are all individual pieces of different paper or paint or whatever. The doors. I love how when it's closed like that, there's a feature, a star. But then when it's opened up, you can see that the star is on this side here. And in this one, I see the same kind of thing that makes me like it is that on the rooftops and the doors it's almost like paper piecing and um, very colorful photos and so I think that we are not too far off to do that too and make it look give it the kind of look that we like but it doesn't have to be so difficult this was the piece that we cut from this right so it, would this not be the template for the rooftop for this roof? And then we could use this. Would this not be the template to cut a paper piecing roof? So that's another reason why I didn't want to throw out the pieces. Here's this piece. Well, if is this not the piece for this roof right here? And then we could add another roof down here if we wanted. And same thing for the other side. So I am going to take a minute and look through pat my pattern paper stash, my jelly plate uh, paper stash, and I'm going to cut some rooftops. I'm also going to go through my stash and use my square punch to cut some potential windows for my houses. And I am also going to, what else was I going to cut? windows. Oh, I know. I was going to take a minute and go back through also and outline. See how only some of this is outlined in this black? And I was going to go back through and just 
give a little line where there is no black line. It's going to be so much easier if I do this now than later. And so I will do that and come right back. I'm at the point where my little house fold out is, look at that. I mean, look at that. Now, it really does have to dry better, but it's at the point, look. And I was thinking we could put pictures here, 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 here. Um, we could put a picture here in the roof somewhere. So I left enough room for photos. Look, and it goes this way too. Look, I love love that. Now these lines look a little funny because that's the pencil. And I really want to show you what we're going to do next. I'm going to show you on a little scrap. If this is the, the pencil, okay, I'll do two here. And if I did it with a baby wipe, if I just, I could rub it. Look at that. See what happens? Or um, if I wanted to do with a, um, a water pencil, see? Then I can get real specific and almost draw with it. That's why I'm saying this is not an ordinary pencil. So um, with that being said, let me see here. I think what I'm going to do is start. I'm going to put that one aside because I'll make a mess. I think I'm going to start with the baby wipe and just see what we can do. Um, because I feel like I don't want to add a whole bunch of moisture with a... Uh, yeah, that's good. That's good. I think I have a little bit more control. Ooh. Yeah, I like I like doing that um, with, the, with the wipe a lot better just for this because I feel like I have a lot more control so I'm just gonna go through and do this as uh, as I want to um, here and there but see like getting right in here let me getting right in here I want to use the water pen I just don't know that I want to do that through the whole thing see because then I can just add deta detail I don't want to I don't want to make a mess. I just want to make a nice outline. And that'll dry super nice. Isn't that great? So glad we glad we did that. But see, I don't want to do that through the whole thing. Just just a little bit. Now you might be asking why I couldn't use a marker. I suppose I could, but um, I don't know that you can do this with a marker and make that drag like that. It looks really good. You can do shadows and things, okay? Um, and you know what I will do? I will put a link in the description box for where you can get the um, Stabilo pencil that I used and also where you can get this Nuvo Deluxe Adhesive. See, this is where I wanna go back in with the white right here. And it's very forgiving, okay? And then after that, after I do this with this, oh, that looks good. After I do that, then what I'm gonna do is sit this to dry, the whole thing. Now that the house accordion um, feature is totally dry, we can start to build our scrapbook page. I cut up, to save time, I did this off camera. I cut a piece of black cardstock to 11 and 3 quarter by 11 and 3 quarter. Then this one is 11 by 11. Okay. Now the thought is that I would really, really like, now mind you, this is the third after a series of epic fails. So, um, yeah. What I really want to have happen is I want a torn corner. I want this torn off. To reveal this underneath but I know that I'm gonna have to tear it in a certain way okay now what I'm gonna do is mark out uh, just lightly where this house is going to be I have to tell you my friend Karen gave me a bunch of art stuff as she was downsizing and thank you Karen so much you don't even know 
And so today in this, in this part, I'm going to use these stencils that she gave me. They are from some sort of cross stitching something. But this is just so perfect. This is so perfect for this. These little houses that you can make with this stenciling thing. And um, so there's a little hill. And I thought we'd just sort of make a little continuation of a scene. I do have to say that I'm really glad that I chose to use the Distress Crayons. For a minute there, I was going to use Gelatos and I like both of those mediums, but I find that with the Distress Crayons, they dry a lot faster and I need that sturdy, steady, guaranteed dry time, especially on a scrapbook page. And especially as I was placing this stencil, I thought that's all I need is to just have a big smear of something. So I was glad I chose the Distress Crayons. And I also like it because you can work with other Distress products, one over top of the other. And um, it was just a, it was just a good choice for me. I couldn't have done that with the Gelato, put a, um, a blue over a green because they would have blended together instead of stayed like layered one on top of the other. And plus then here I pulled out a distress oxide. I wanted to do a little tree or something and I could go right over top and you could with the gelato it wouldn't layer like that. It would blend together. So um, that's one of the differences that I like. And sometimes I like that quality in a gelato. It just depends on what I'm trying to do. But in this project, I wasn't trying to do that. So the finger smudging works just fine as long as, well, for me, I need to have like a baby wipe nearby to wipe off said inky finger or else I'll just continue to have inky finger, inky finger. So yeah, the baby wipe is, is pretty handy. These stencils were great. And like I said, I apologize. I don't know uh, where they came from, um, like originally. But I think even if you don't have or can't find these stencils somewhere, I think it just kind of opens up the door. Like, don't just walk past the cross stitch aisle if you're a scrapbooker. You know, see what they have and just kind of, um, or, or if somebody's giving you something is kind enough to give you something, don't just maybe write it off because you don't do that particular craft. Maybe um, open up your mind and see if you could find a way to use it in what craft you do enjoy. I wanted to have some trees in the background, but I just, I just didn't want solid trees. So I thought, well, maybe I could just use the outline and make it look like there are a bunch of trees. I mean, we can use our imagination. We'll know what we're trying to do. And then I just use my finger with regular Distress Ink. I think that's mowed lawn. Put some little shrubs um, nearby the houses. And I liked working with this. It was really fun. This part probably took as long as making that accordion house though, I have to say, but that's okay. Um, I hadn't played with my distressed crayons in a while. The stencils wipe off really, really nice with a baby wipe too, by the way. Now you'll be able to see close-ups on sandpaperroad.com on my blog, but there is a, a quick close-up there. And then I didn't like the way that that was just floating. Um, and I knew I was gonna put some torn paper or something but it just, at first, every time I did it, it looked like water, which I did not want. And so I thought, well, I think I'm just gonna just go for it because I, I know what I want it to look like. Finally, I was so happy to be able to glue down my accordion house. And I was even more overjoyed that I had left a note for myself early on in the project because I was not gonna remember that. So I just used some of that 3D matte gel by Prima Marketing. It's really great holds everything 
and then I open the accordion house all the way up and put my Tim Holtz stamping platform on top. I am continuing this page in real time because I'm almost done and I'm using a little bit of uh, matte acrylic paint, just inexpensive paint. I just wanted to add some, um, I don't know, just some paint along the edges. That's sort of just a look I like. This is how my little stencil house turned out. Isn't that so cute? And because I use the Distress Crayons, it's dry, like it won't go with my hand. You know what I mean? It won't smudge or smear. And I adhered this down. Look at that. It's too cute. And it goes this way. I know. Too cute. So what I thought what would happen here is I thought I would put a journaling block right here, a big, big journaling block, and tell the story, and then do my title um, here. And I found these great letters. They're forever, ever from my stash, um, from Basic Gray. I almost wanna say they're a part of the set, the same set as this, they might be. But I like to use the stuff for my stash. So anyway, I'm just gonna dab, this is my, what is this? And just paint and just go over. Now I'm doing this before I go, uh, before I adhere this down. It's gonna be a lot harder to just get paint on just this edge. Ooh. If I try to adhere it down first to the, um, to the other paper. So. And I'm, I'm getting paint all over my fingers, which is pretty typical. Now, I, I kind of didn't want to do it all over this grass, just here and there around the edges, because I didn't want to look want it to look like snow. So, yeah. And now that I've got that, see, I like, I like that look. I just like that look. And see, now with the rest... I can just add a little bit here and there. I just like the way that looks. It's just a preference. Clean up that paint with a little baby wipe, which I keep a pack on my desk. Okay, great. And uh, we're about ready here to continue. I think I'll do the title. I'm not sure. How, I'm not sure what I'll have it say, but I definitely want to use these letters down here and if I don't have enough for some reason I've never used them look at that then I'll add them with those letters so now I'm going to adhere this to the back of this oh I see that I tried to do something on the back of this already Looks amazing. That's great. Here is the finished page. I went through with some Nouveau Crystal Drops right there for accent, and I left the title uh, just as is, nice uh, and plain, because there's so much going on the rest of the page. I did add, I did tear this right here, and I added some black journaling paper behind here, which is journaling paper, just meaning that it's already got uh, lines on it for journaling. That's the way it came. And a little bit more paint. Isn't this amazing? Now your pictures can go here, here. You could have a picture in here, pictures in the rooftops. But this is more, I think, of in terms of a layout, this is more of a story page. Start to tell, look, at we could put pictures in the windows. Either little mini pictures or tell a story. This would be great, great, great for the first page of a scrapbook album on a house album or a family album or something like that. Now for the giveaway, um, Somerset Studio, you can win this magazine just by clicking subscribe to the YouTube channel and uh, click that notification bell to get the notifications. And don't forget to share. So just subscribe and share. That's all you have to do to be entered to win. And I will announce the winner on Instagram, which is Sandpaper Road on Instagram. 
on this coming Friday, this Friday before Memorial Day. I'm so excited. Good luck to everybody. You'll receive this free magazine if you're the winner. That means no shipping, no nothing. It's a $9.99 value, and I'll ship it right to your house. And uh, you can enjoy it and see if you, uh, if you like it. And uh, maybe you'll subscribe to the magazine. I don't know. That's up to you. But thanks so much for watching. Check out Sandpaper Road on Facebook and Instagram and Pinterest. And uh, if you want to do some shopping, head over to Sandpaper Road on Etsy. And don't forget to check out sandpaperroad.com for uh, my blog and some lots of great close-ups with this page, including the process and uh, links in the description box to where you can purchase these items used. Thanks so much for watching. Good luck with the giveaway. Bye-bye.